What is up guys? Thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt and we are working on 1969 MG MGB GT. And this is having some running issues. And basically what we need to get down to is the carburetors, at least up front. We have two SU carburetors and one is leaking profusely. So what we first want to do is go ahead and pull those. And then once we rebuild them, we're going to put them back in and then check for timing and just tune up the car. So stay tuned. So with the engine, or should I say the bonnet, propped up, we are going to take a look at these SU carburetors. Now these are similar to, let's say, also what is run in the 240Z slightly. But for the MG, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the air, the fuel, and then as well, it's just some of these other connections and then go ahead and pull it out of the car and take it to the bench. Now we've already taken off the air filters you can see here. So let's go ahead and pull these carbs out. So the one thing we want to do prior to pulling off the carbs is make sure you have pictures of the carburetors when they were mounted or any part that you're taking off and that way you can reference the way things go back together. Now what we're also going to do is take apart just one of the carburetors at a time. That way if anything happens we have the other carb to reference it. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and remove these hoses and separate the carburetors and then start taking apart the one that was leaking. So now we're going to go ahead and just look over the carburetor and this is the one that was leaking. It was leaking from the jet fuel hose and there is the main reason why. So we'll but what we're going to do is, is we're not going to actually remove the butterflies. We're just going to actually keep those on and just clean them up slightly. Everything else seems to be moving fine. So what we're going to do is replace the jets and the valves and as well the gaskets. So we're going to go ahead and start removing the jet tube and as well the shaft here. And so now that we've taken most of these parts and we're keeping everything in order and in line of where they come out, we're going to go ahead and take the fuel float out. And there is a side to this that has a knurled mark. And so we're going to take it from the knurled mark out. We're checking to see if there is any fuel left over and we'll want to make sure that this still is a float and that there's no cracks or holes. So now that we have all of our main pieces apart, we're going to go ahead and look on the inside and just inspect that we have no issues on the needle. And in this case, we're actually going to replace the needle, but everything else looks pretty well sorted. So we're gonna go ahead and clean the aluminum pieces. Now the way we're going to 
go ahead and clean is give our ultrasonic cleaner a shot. We've used Pine Saw on other carburetors. So we're just gonna fill that up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the heater and let that warm up. So now that our ultrasonic cleaner is up to temperature, we're gonna go ahead and put in our parts. And for this one, we'll probably just flip it over. Just load that up. And then we're gonna run this for about eight minutes. All right, it's been eight minutes. We did flip the main carb body around. And we might put that back in. That looks a lot better. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is get the other parts clean so we can put this all back together. All right, so we have got all of our parts clean. So we've laid out all of our pieces from our rebuild kit and our clean pieces and things we've just kind of wiped up. So now the last thing we wanna do is go ahead and test whether or not this float still works. And we just have a glass of water. We're just looking for bubbles and I don't see any, so we are good. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is rebuild this carburetor. Put together the fuel housing. We're gonna go ahead and put rubber bushing together. Take the top, take our new needle seats and gasket. Place in our needle valve, take our float. and making sure that the pin that has the knurled edge is on the outside. And push that in until it stops. Now we'll take the housing and our new gasket. Take our screws. Always best to put them on just slightly tight so you can get all the bolts on and then go through and tighten them. Now we're going to take, and I've already placed the rubber seal that came with the kit onto our bolt. This will connect here. Make sure that's seated down. and run the bolt in and snug that up. Now we'll go ahead and take our old needle and we need to remove this part and the spring. And we're gonna take our new needle, carefully place that spring on the little seat. You'll note this little indentation that goes on the inside it is wider here than the other. And that will go over the jet. Then we take our piston, slide that on, and we want it to sit level with the top of the piston and tighten that down. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the jet adjuster lever and we need its spring. And you'll note this knob here, that sits in like that. Then we take the lever and you want this angled piece to point towards the jet assembly. So we're gonna take our bolt, put it like so. Thread it on and then snug it up. So now we're going to go ahead and install the jet adjusting nut and spring. And what we're gonna do there is screw this down until it's all the way in. Now we're going to go ahead and take our piston 
from our dash pot and what we want to do is just give this just a real light lubricant, nothing major. Place our spring and place into the dash pot and just carefully spin it around and take that, line up our needle and our, line up our dash pot and insert our bolts that do not have the washers. And when tightening them, don't tighten them all the way down just till they touch until you get all three screws in. And once they're in, just give them a little tighten and then just check for movement. And in this case, we did not take the lock nut out. And if you did, you would need to make sure that you center the jet. In this case, also the jet has a spring, so it kind of self centers. But when you drop it, you should hear a clunk like so. Next, what we can do, we're gonna fill the oil later, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and put the cover that oil is important not only for movement, but mostly for resistance against the travel of the piston. Now, once we have that set, we're gonna go ahead and take our jet tube. And in this case, we have one that is separate in the kit. If we look at the one that came with the other kit for the carburetor, it has a spring. So this is one piece, whereas this has three pieces. So we're gonna go ahead, place that on like so. We're gonna put the, in this case, the braided hose on. Just slide that out of the way. This is a nylon barbed connector. We're gonna go ahead and put that in and snug it up. And the brass one piece nozzle, you can snug up fairly tight the nylon, we're gonna do the same, being careful not to ruin. Oh, and once that's tight, we make sure that the braided hose goes end to end all the way. Now, the next thing we wanna do is you'll need something flat, such as a ruler. In this case, I'm using a paint stick. So you'll use the ruler or the paint stick to flatten. Hopefully you can see inside when the jet tube pops up, you want it to be flush with the base of the barrel of the carburetor. So what we're gonna do, put the paint stick like so, and where you can see there is a gap. We're gonna unscrew the adjustment while holding our stick. So you can see the gap that it creates when we hold the ruler against the bottom of the barrel of the carburetor. So we wanna move the adjustment knob right out to when the jet tube no longer moves. Then we can still test for our drop. And now we're going to move on to the choke lever. And the way the choke lever goes on, we have a few pieces. We have the pivot bolt, we have the barrel, and then also a washer. And then that sits through like so. And last but not least, we have this spring. And this spring you'll see has hooks on two ends. The hook that faces out this side sits in the channel that's right here on this arm, like so. And this hook is going to sit up against this knob. So we're gonna go ahead and one thing we need to do is put it almost upside down in the sense that the, the adjustment for the jet tube sits like so, and it sits inside of the jet tube. So you don't want this facing out, you want it facing in. We're gonna get that bolt started just until it's snug. Then you take your right angle pick sure your spring is still lined up in the right spot. Sometimes it's easier to hold the choke lever all the way till it won't move anymore and hold your spring with your thumb, making sure the spring is still touching the other side and grab with our right angle pick and loop it around the knob like so. And you'll want some resistance when pushing it down. Now what we wanna do is snug the pivot bolt and you're gonna 
be very careful because remember, you're going into aluminum and you have that barrel in the, on the outside of that nut. So you just want it slightly tight. Otherwise you'll break this bolt and these aren't cheap. So now that we have that installed, what we're gonna do is push down on the choke lever so it makes our adjustment arm close to our jet tube. Then we're gonna take our screw and line it up with that. And what comes in handy for tightening these down are these right angle screwdrivers. So we'll go ahead and tighten this up. And now that we have everything tightened down, we just wanna check for movement. We can see that our adjustment to our jet moves. And since we have set the floor of the jet, we're gonna to want to mark with a paint pen, just the front face that we know that's at zero because what we're gonna do now is adjust this two full rotations. We're gonna go around so we see this twice or you can just count faces and go 12 because this is a six sided bolt. So we'll go ahead and unscrew that two times. There's one and there's two. So that's gonna give us a good starting point to get this back on the car and get it started and then we can do all of our adjustments. All right, so before we put in the carburetors, what we wanna do is actually test the fuel pressure. We're not sure what the fuel pumps are doing in this. So what we did is rented a fuel pressure gauge. We hooked it up to the fuel line. So let's turn on the ignition and see where we're at. So in this case, we're using a gauge that is for fuel injection, so much higher pressure. And since we are only trying to get a couple PSI, there's barely any reading with the fuel pump on. So I think we are good. We don't exceed our pressure. So now we're gonna get the carburetors installed. All right, so now that we know that the fuel pump is running well, we've got the carburetors rebuilt. What we're gonna go ahead and put them together at the same time and then slide them on. All right, so we've gone through and connected all of our hoses in our line for our gas. And now what we want to do is prime the fuel pump and just bring that pressure up, fill those float bowls and check for leaks before we start the car. So we're just checking our connections. Alright, so we've gone ahead and filled up the oil in the dash pot. Definitely double check depending on where you live and the temperatures that you're operating your car in for specifics. But for now, before we tune the carbs, let's talk about what we've done on this to get this car ready. Alright, so when you are working on a carbureted car like this MG, there's a few things that you need to check and make sure is spot on. Like for example, you want to make sure that you have fresh gas. Don't want to be trying to start this with bad gas. So drain the gas and put fresh fuel in. Next, we want to make sure all of our ignition is all the best it can be. So new spark plugs, check the condenser, check the coil, check the points. In this case, we're still running points. Check the cap and rotor. Make sure there's no cracks, no burns. Everything is working up to par. Make some valve adjustments. That's suggested as well. In this case, we want to also make sure that timing is set correctly. Now, what we've done off camera for the MG is we went ahead and did static timing. And basically that's where you line up the crank pulley to a certain degree, in this case, 10 degrees below top dead center. And then we check the distributor to where the points are closing and opening and we want it to shut off. So in this case, we are set. We've gone through and gapped the spark plugs. We've cleaned out and updated the distributor and made sure it was oiled. And then we also have gone through and made sure it has fresh fuel. So now let's try to bring that fuel into the carbs by just clicking on the fuel pump just to the run position. In this case, we're just gonna turn the key on to the run position. We heard a click from the fuel pump. So we wanna make sure in the engine, that we do not have any leaks, that all of our hoses are dry. We also put a new fuel filter in, by the way, and that everything looks good. Nothing is spilling out of the passageways. 
So we are good. All right, so we finished the SU carbs on that MG. We did run into a few problems with the engine and we wanted to make sure that engine is top notch before we go tuning the carbs. What we need to do is actually get that engine rebuilt and that's because one of the pistons is actually pulling in some oil so it's causing it to, to run rough. But once we do that, get those carbs tuned, that MG will be back on the road. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, consider subscribing. I do appreciate every single one of you. We do have what you guys have been patiently waiting for is the 260Z coming right up. We've been getting things lined up so we can work on it once again. Can't wait to bring that to you. And also we've got a 1993 Audi S4. So also stay tuned for that. But until then, you guys have a good one, and we'll see you then. So thanks so much.